Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in Mayapur in the town of Nadia, just after sunset. He was born on the 18th of February, 1486 of the Christian era. The moon was eclipsed at the time of his birth and the people of Nadia were then engaged, as was usual on such occasions. They bathed in the Bhagirathi with loud cheers of Hari Bol. His father Jagannath Mishra, a poor Brahmana of the Vedic order, and his mother Sachi Devi, a model good woman, both descended from Brahmana stock, originally residing in Silhet. Mahaprabhu was a very smart child and was admitted into a Pathashala school where he picked up Bengali in a very short time. It is said that when he was an infant in his mother's arm, he wept continuously and when the neighboring ladies called, hurry bowl, hurry bowl, he used to stop. His mother once gave him sweets to eat. He ate clay instead of the food. His mother asked for the reason. He said that as every sweet was nothing but clay transformed, he could eat clay as well. His mother, who was the consort of a pundit, explained that in every article, a special state was adapted to a special use. Earth, while in the state of a jug, could be used as a water pot, but in the state of a brick, such use was not possible. Clay, therefore, in the form of sweets, could be used as food, but not clay in other states. The lad was convinced and admitted his stupidity, eating the clay, and agreed to avoid the mistake in the future. Another miraculous thing happened. A Brahmana was a guest at his house. Each time the Brahmana cooked rice, baby Nimai came and ate it. The Brahmana cooked the rice and Nimai ate it again and then a third time. Nimai then showed his true form and gave the Brahmana a blessing. Two thieves stole away baby Nimai from his house to steal his jewels, but were deceived by Nimai and then returned him. Another event is when Nimai was four. He sat on rejected cooking pots, which were considered unholy. He said that there was no difference between holy and unholy. Lord Chaitanya, a now married man, moved to Bengal to acquire wealth. My dear Tapan Mishra, it is very important that you go live in Banaras, India, for reasons that you will soon find. Mother, human affairs are very uncertain. You may never know what Krishna has planned for you, unless you are his best friend. Do not fret or worry. All will be fine. I will get remarried, and I will try and make you happy the best I can. My dear devotee, one should not think in materialistic things in Kali Yuga. One must focus on achieving the highest goal of life, Lord Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu singed and danced in pure ecstasy of the holy name. He chanted and cried in tears of ecstasy with all the devotees all together on Sankirtan. Go to Nadia and ask everyone to chant the holy name. Lord Chaitanya gives Lord Nityananda and Haridas a job which is to preach to Nadia. So Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur go to Nadia to preach there. Chant Hare Krishna. 
Chant the holy name and you'll be happy. Why? You'll be happy. This was brought to Mahaprabhu's notice. He ordered the townspeople to appear in the evening, each with a torch in his hand. This they did, and Nimai marched out with his Sankirtan divided into 14 groups. On his arrival in the Kazi's house, he held a long conversation with the Kazi, and in the end communicated into his heart his Vaishnav influence by touching his body. The Kazi then wept and admitted that he had felt a keen spiritual influence which had cleared up his doubts and produced in him a religious sentiment which gave him the highest ecstasy. The Kazi then joined the Sankirtan party. The world was astonished at the spiritual power of the great Lord, and the hundreds and hundreds of heretics converted and joined the banner of Vishwambar after this affair. It was after this that some of the jealous and low-minded brahmanas of Kuliya picked a quarrel with Mahaprabhu and collected a party to oppose him. Nimai Pandit was naturally a soft-hearted person, though strong in his principles. He declared that party feelings and sectarianism were the two great enemies of progress, and he saw that as long as he should continue to be an inhabitant of Nabia, belonging to a certain family, his mission would not meet with complete success. He then resolved to be a citizen of the world by cutting off his connection with his particular family, caste, and creed. And with this resolution, he embraced the position of a sannyasi at Katwa under the guidance of Keshava Bharati of that town in the 24th year of his life. His mother and wife wept bitterly for his separation. But our hero, though soft in heart, was a strong person in his principles. He left his little world and his house for the unlimited spiritual world of Krishna with man in general. After agreeing to go with Advaita, Mahaprabhu decided to start walking to his house. After walking for a while, Mahaprabhu arrived at Advaita's house, where he was surprised by all his friends. After seeing all his friends, Mahaprabhu encountered his mother, who was crying seeing him as a sannyasi. After seeing his mother, he immediately fell down and paid obeisances and asked for permission to go to Shantipur to preach. His biographers have given us details of the journey. He first went to Kormakshetra, where he did a miracle by curing a leper named Vasudev. He met Ramananda Rai, the governor of Vidyanagara, on the banks of the Godavari, and had a philosophical conversation with him on the subject of Prema Bhakti. He worked another miracle by touching, making them immediately disappear the seven tall trees, from behind which Ramachandra, the son of Dashrath, had shot his arrow and killed the great Bali Raj. Mahaprabhu preached Vaishnavism and Amasankirtan throughout his journey. At Rangakshetra, he stayed for four months in the house of one Venkata Rupata in order to spend the rainy season. There, he converted the whole family of Venkata from Ramanuja Vaishnavism to Krishna Bhakti, including the son of Venkata, a boy of ten years named Gopal, who afterwards came to Vrindavan and became one of the six Goswamis, prophets serving under their leader Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Trained up in Sanskrit by his uncle Prabodhananda Saraswati, Gopal wrote several books on Vaishnavism. Chaitanya visited numerous places in southern India as far as Cape Comoran and returned to Puri in two years by Pandarapura on the Bhima. In this latter place, he spiritualized one Tukarama, who became from that time a religious preacher himself. This fact has been admitted in the Ambangas, which have been collected in a volume by Mr. Satyendranath Tagore of the Bombay Civil Service. During his journey, he had discussions with the Buddhists, the Jains, and the Mayavadis in several places and converted his opponents to Vaishnavism. In Lord Chaitanya's 28th year, he traveled to Bengal as far as Goda and Malda. There he met Rupa and Sanatan, who were two of his greatest devotees. These two gentlemen had previously written to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for spiritual help while he was staying in Jagannathpur.
After instructing Rupa and Sanata to go await his arrival in Vrindavan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to Puri through Shantipur, where he again met his dear mother, who was delighted to be with him once again. After a short stay at Puri, Mahaprabhu left for Vrindavan. After his visit to Vrindavan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went down to Allahabad where his dear friend Srila Rupa Goswami was awaiting his arrival. Here, Mahaprabhu trained him in Krishna consciousness for 10 days and then sent him to Vrindavan on two missions. While at Benares, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had an interview with the learned sannyasis of that town in the house of a Martha Brahmana, who had invited all the sannyasis for an entertainment. At this interview, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed a miracle which attracted all the sannyasis to him. The sannyasis were headed by their most learned leader, Prakashananda Saraswati. After a short controversy, they submitted themselves to Mahaprabhu and admitted that they had been misled by the commentaries of Shankaracharya. It was impossible even for learned scholars to oppose Chaitanya for a long time as there was some spell in him which touched their hearts and made them weep for their spiritual improvement. The sannyasis of Benares soon fell at the feet of Chaitanya and asked for his grace, Kripa. Mahaprabhu went to Puri through the forest of Jarikand. In the forest, he made tigers and elephants dance on hearing the names of Krishna. From his 31st year, Mahaprabhu continually lived in Puri, in the house of Kashi Mishra, until his disappearance in his 48th year at the time of Sankirtan in the temple of Tota Gopinath. Sir Damodar was a pit devotee. Sir Damodar sang and danced. So Damodar did a lot of service. Sir Damodar's sweet appearance gave cheer to all who came in contact with him. 